Hello, my name is Lieutenant Commander Cassandra Metu, and I'm a Senior Regulatory Project Manager in the Office of Generic Drugs at the Food and Drug Administration. And I have one of the most important presentations that you are going to experience during this conference, and that is the information to include with your cover letter. I do have some learning objectives for this presentation. First, to understand the purpose of the cover letter to examine the FDA issued guidances, also to evaluate what information is most important to include in the cover letter, and lastly, to understand the resources that you guys can use to create an effective cover letter for your submission purpose. So what is the purpose of a cover letter? The primary purpose of a cover letter is to summarize the content, identify the purpose of the submission, highlight key elements, and also provide required regulatory statements. But for the FDA, one of the most important purposes of the cover letter is to help the FDA route and manage the submission effectively. Now, what guidance can you guys use to understand what's important or how to structure your cover letter? I'll briefly go over that. Uh, one of the main guidances is going to be the ANDA submission content and format guidance for industry. It contains non-binding recommendations, and applicants are free to use an alternative approach as long as it, is, as it satisfies the applicable statutes and regulations. And this is just a picture of the cover letter, uh, sorry, the table of contents, so that you can see where you can find information on the cover letter, and it also has a suggested cover letter template. We do encourage that applicants create their own template with their own cover um, heading so that it's familiar and tailored to your needs. There's some other suggested information to include, um, and the FDA wants to highlight that it does recommend that whatever you put in the cover letter that it clearly states if there's any proposed major changes to your original submission. So that is definitely important to include in your cover letter. Then also this is the template that is included. You can peruse it, uh, you can, sorry, review it at your leisure, but just remember that this is an encouraged template. You're not required, not all, app, not all paragraphs are required to be put into the cover letter, and you should really adapt this cover letter to meet your specific need and submission type. Also, another guidance is going to be the amendments to abbreviated new drug applications under GDUFA. I've put a snapshot of where you can find some information regarding the cover letter. You can also find information regarding the cover letter in specific guidances and specific maps. The FDA does have a page that you can access most guidances and uh, sections of the FDA map for you to review based on your submission type, what information should be included. Now, what are some of the cover letter components? So generally recommended for all submissions is going to be the company letterhead, the submission type, the date, the heading and reference number, and when you, uh, reference information, excuse me. So you're going to have the ANDA number, name of the product, sometimes the sequence number. Also, you'll have statements about the, how the doc, document was submitted and the file structure as required by ECTD uh, submission standards the name and signature contact information of the person submitting the information, if it's different from the point of contact, also the regulatory and technical point of contact, and reference, if any, any relevant FDA action letters, emails, or correspondence that you're referring to within this cover letter or within this submission. Also, any regulatory descriptions of submissions, um, any hyperlinks, that you want to submit two aspects of the actual submission. You want to include your Medicare Prescription Drug and Improvement and Modernization Act of 2003, <laughs> excuse me, 2003, uh, verification statement, which is uh, a component of every, um, every amendment after the original submission. 
You're going to include a technical description of the submission as required by ECTD submission requirements. Also, that the submission is virus free and a description of the software that you're going to use to check that the file is free of viruses. Now, there are some things that are generally recommended, but it's based on submission type. We do encourage you to consult applicable guidance for recommended information, and then also reference the aspect of the CFR that is the basis of the submission. One of the common things is going to be if you're going to withdraw an unapproved application, you want to cite that you're, you are withdrawing that unapproved application based off of the CFR information. This is an example of a heading that has a lot of information. Um, in this one, we have the date. We have all, what type of submission it is, highlighted in bold. The heading tells us what it is and what's included in it. And these are just two different styles that you can use. Again, the FDA just has a recommendation of the information. You can tailor your cover letter style-wise as much as you want to meet your company's needs. Now, we're going to go over some commonly omitted information because, again, the FDA has recommendations. There's no required template for the cover letter, but there's information that is very, very, very helpful and that people generally leave out, which the FDA now has to reach out to applicants, or it could cause sometimes some delay in review of your submission. So first thing that we do see commonly omitted from the cover letter is the MMA verification statement. As stated, that statement is required usually after the first submission of the ANDA. Any subsequent submissions to the ANDA application, you need to certify to the patents or let us know if there's any changes that affect your patent certification. Priority requests. Um, generally, Every time you submit after an action, you have to re-request priority review of your application. And some applicants do forget to add that information to the cover letter right after that action letter has been uh, sent by the FDA. Whatever unsolicited information is included. So one of the things that is usually not included in the submission are going to be labeling updates. That's probably the most common unsolicited information that we see in the actual contents of the submission, but is not identified in the cover letter. So we want to make sure that if there's any information that's gratuitous, meaning not requested by the FDA, but is necessary for application assessment, you include that in your cover letter. If you are adding labeling information, attaching it to an IR um, uh, information response or a complete response that didn't have any deficiencies for labeling or any other information on your application. If you're attaching any additional information that was not requested, please put that information in the cover letter or put that you're adding that information or submitting that information inside the cover letter. If you have any new or revised patent certifications or litigation updates, a lot of times the the um, regulatory project managers have to reach out and request that information. So it is really good for you to input that information in your cover letter and highlight it so that information is not missed when we are trying to triage your amendment to the appropriate disciplines. Then this is not necessarily an omission, but this does cause problems when we are triaging when you include significant changes on the latter pages of a long cover letter. Some applicants do use their cover letter to address co a complete response resubmissions, and they have all the information inside the cover letter, but maybe on page 10 of a 13-page cover letter, they're listing that, oh, we want to reformulate or we want to add a new strength submission, uh, sorry, new strength amendment. So those significant changes being put at the tail end of the cover letter can sometimes be missed. Major information not needed, I'm sorry, not noted, excuse me. 
So if there's a new batch or study in response to deficiency, that's a major amendment. If there's any changes to the f uh, facilities, if you're adding a facility, if you're withdrawing a facility, that is considered a major change to the application. If you're making any changes to the drug master file, or if you think that there's any changes that would require any additional filing review, we want you to make sure you note that very, very prominently on your cover letter. That is very, very useful to put that information in the cover letter and make it very pronounced so that we can make sure that we get that information to the appropriate discipline. Now I'm going to go over some best practices. Again, these are FDA recommendations. These are not requirements, but these help us do our job in triaging your amendment and reviewing your application that much easier. So first best practice is to include all new or major changes or labeling updates in the header. The header is a very, very, very important tool that applicants can use to ensure that we don't miss anything that you're including in your submission. So I've provided an example of a cover letter header that has lots of information in it uh, the submission has lots of information and the cover letter is going to identify it. So for example, in this one, it is a complete response amendment, but also it's a new strength amendment. Then there's also unsolicited information to be added and it's helpful to put whatever that unsolicited information in parentheses so that we know, okay, it's a bio study that we're looking at. Or, you know, if it's a new strength amendment, we know that that has to go through a filing to be added to the application. So this is just an example of what a good cover letter for us looks like when we are trying to route your cover letter or your submission to the appropriate departments and disciplines. Another best practice is to create a cover letter template and include that information that's typically um, included. For example, already have your virus information, the points of contacts, your contact information, the header. So um, it helps to reduce any, leaving out any information, specifically like the MMA verification. If you know that majority of your submissions do not affect the uh, patent certification uh, or does not have uh, any changes that you would need to, you know, address the patent certification, already have that MMA verification on your cover letter template. Also, you can just um, remove unnecessary information as appropriate. Also, it's very useful to highlight significant elements of your submission in the beginning of your cover letter. Place the most major changes in the beginning because that increases our visibility we're looking at, you know, lots of information. So we want to make sure that if there's changes, it's not buried within the content of your cover letter. Separating each item on, into its own paragraph helps us to be able to really glean out what is included in your submission. Also, be concise in your cover letter, especially if more detail is provided within other modules. Um, some applicants just provide very bare minimal information in their cover letters and then put most of their content in the various modules within their submission. Some applicants put all of their um, responses to any inquiries on the cover letter. Whichever option you choose, just make sure you're very, very clear about any major information and then be concise if you have that information somewhere else in the application for review. Also, it's important for you to keep, use keywords rather than vague and lengthy descriptions of the content. Certain things like reformulation should be used, certain phrases, excuse me, like reformulation should be used instead of changes to the composition of the product. Because when somebody reads that, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is a reformulation. So when you say reformulation, we know appropriately which departments to route your submission to. 
Get familiar with the types of changes that can affect your review process and ensure that those changes are always noted in your cover letter. Also, bolding goes a lot a long way. If you have any administrative information that or requests that are within any submission, you're mixing submission types, make sure you bold any additional requests within your cover letter. For example, if there is a reconsideration that you submit with, along with your complete response, make sure you bold that there is a reconsideration request within this submission so that we can make sure that that is routed to the appropriate um, department for review. You can also use a cover letter and cover letter attachment when some uh, combining submissions. Um, you know, there are applicants that I've seen put all the information within their one cover letter. Sometimes it may be easier for you to just put the pertinent information and then use a cover letter attachment to actually respond to the content so that it kind of separates it, especially when you have a lot of information contained within your submission and it is kind of a multiple elements to your submission. All right, so now let's test your knowledge to see if you are um, well equipped to go forth and be great in using your cover letter. So the first challenge question is, which module of the ECTD submission is the cover letter contained in? Is it going to be module B, module 2, module A, or module 1? So I'll give you guys at least 10 seconds to ponder on which module we have we find the cover letter in. Alrighty. So the answer to this question is module one. That is where we find the cover letter within your electronic submission. Okay, now the second challenge question is a true or false. True or false, the FDA cover letter template provides information that is required for each submission. So it's either true or false. I'll give you guys a few seconds to pick your answer. Alrighty, so now the answer to this question is false. The FDA cover letter template provides information that is recommended or suggested, but you still have to tailor your cover letter based on your submission type. So just keep that in mind. The FDA does not require the information as far as the cover letter template is concerned, but it is, it's suggested so that we work together in providing good information and knowing what should be submitted and what shouldn't be submitted. So it's pretty comprehensive, but some paragraphs aren't going to apply to your submission depending on what type it is. Okay, so just a summary, you know, applicants should really use the cover letter to help the FDA identify its content and the purpose of the submission very quickly. Um, the FDA provides guidance, but it really is up to the applicant to tailor the cover letter to their needs and purpose. Also, the cover letter should guide the FDA on how to route your submission for the appropriate review. And it should clearly state any significant changes to the application in the heading and body of the cover. And again, we want you to put that body in the beginning. We want you to put the major amendments and major information in the beginning of your submission. So just a closing thought, CYA, cover your application. Because the cover letter is a detailed overview of the contents, you want to be very effective and strategic with how you use it. Make sure that it's very effective to help the FDA know what information, know how to route it quickly, because ultimately that aids us in providing a more effective review for your submission. I have provided some resources that you guys can use to review, to understand what elements to include in your cover letter. And if you have any additional questions after the conference, contact your regulatory project manager. That concludes my presentation. I want to thank you guys for your attention. 
If you do have any questions, you can submit it to the appropriate section and then join us for the live Q&A session where we'll be answering any questions that you guys have about this presentation. Thank you again, and you guys enjoy the rest of the conference.